New Democrats scored a historic victory in British Columbia over the weekend. The party is projected to win 55 of the province's 87 ridings. The results won't be finalized until more than half a million mail-in ballots are counted in November. But already, there is fallout for the provincial Liberals. After losing seats and vote share right around the province, Leader Andrew Wilkinson said just this hour, that, or last hour, that he is stepping down. Joining me now with more is BC Provincial Affairs reporter Tanya Fletcher in Vancouver. Tanya, uh, exciting few days for for you folks out in <laughs> British Columbia. Let's, let's talk about Saturday's results. What did the, those and, and Wilkinson stepping down as leader say about the state of the Provincial Liberal Party right now in British Columbia? It's really reflected, David, where this party has gone over the past three and a half years as it's newly been in opposition in this province. This was the worst result for the B.C. Liberals in nearly three decades in this province. You know, they lost uh, 12 seats. It's their worst uh, seat count since 1991. And not only that, because, of course, we know a few key ridings can swing and make all of the difference. But a greater reflection is the overall popular vote, the vote share. They lost that in every single region of B.C. And that really is telling. It's why, you know, the night after the night of the election, the B.C. Liberal leader gave a not quite concession speech. He tweeted out on Sunday at 5 p.m. that he called John Horgan to congratulate him. And now today he announced his resignation. It was 97 seconds in total. His statement to the media, he took no questions. And here's part of what Andrew Wilkinson said just an hour ago. Leading the B.C. Liberals has been a great honour, but now it's time for me to make room for someone else to take over this role. I've asked the party president to work with the party executive to immediately determine the timeline for a leadership selection process. So his message throughout this campaign was centered on law and order. He really leaned to the right and tried to leverage, you know, crime and homelessness and often conflating those things with addictions. That message really didn't resonate. And you even look hyper local. You zero in on specific writings like in Surrey, for example, where they tried to leverage pre-existing issues. The city of Surrey had decided to get rid of the RCMP in favor of a municipal police force. The B.C. Liberals promised to hold a referendum on that to try to leverage some of the opposition and the anger against that didn't resonate. They, in fact, lost a seat in Surrey. So you look at where their message just fell flat and they didn't connect with voters. And more broadly speaking, that, that drives home the point of where this party goes. It is in a reckoning. It is having an identity crisis and it needs to figure out where they go from here. At the crux of it is figuring out the dissonance between trying to keep the right of center more conservative, small c conservatives happy while still trying to move forward and carve a new path to attract younger, more moderate progressive voters. Just a moment ago, I got off the phone with who was going to be kind of a, a, a leadership successor. His name was at the top of that list. He lost his own riding. And so he said, you know, he, he didn't rule out still a leadership uh, potential run in the future. But he was very candid now in saying that this party over the last three and a half years had a chance to rebrand itself and it didn't. It failed at that. It's, he said he's, they've, been, they've been trickling away the urban vote. Over the years, they've gradually been losing those urban votes. And he said on Saturday that trickle turned into a tsunami. They really need to figure out how to paint a new path forward. And they haven't been able to do that under the leadership of Andrew Wilkinson. He was clear in saying that the party doesn't reflect the diversity of B.C. in age and in, you know, visible minorities. He himself said that that was a very clear uh, point, turning point for this party. So that's where they need to go from here. Yeah, which all explains why that lasted 97 seconds with no questions <laughs> earlier today. Yes. OK, but on the other side of this, uh, the results are pretty strong endorsement for the NDP, their leader, the elected Premier John Horgan. What are the, some of the significant places that that party won over voters? Yeah, well, you just have to look at where they won, right? Traditional liberal fortresses and some very surprising seat flips. You look at Richmond, for example, which has been long liberal, uh, B.C. liberals. Four ridings there all have been liberal red for decades. This time around, the NDP managed to flip three out of the four there. You move further east into the Fraser Valley. It's really these suburban seats in Metro Vancouver. In the Fraser Valley, which is the epicenter of the conservative vote, They've, it looks like, once the final ballots are in, it looks like they've lost all four seats combined in, in Langley and in Chilliwack. So that tells us a huge message about where voters are at. The caution, though, for John Horgan is, is this simply a pandemic a pandemically tailored election result. Could they have run on, you know, it didn't matter what their platform is. People wanted a stable, steady hand. They had that in the NDP before. They largely ran on Dr. Bonnie Henry. So was that just simply a result on let's keep the status quo? We asked John Horgan this yesterday, and specifically I asked him how he's going to 
keep everybody in this in this party happy now because they did sway some traditionally right of center voters for the first time. How is he going to reconcile that with still appealing and keeping happy his more traditionally progressive left of center base base? Because this is now a very broad tent. And here was John Horgan's answer to that. Uh, it's a tent that I deliberately constructed. Uh, I believe that New Democrat values are mainstream values. My values are uh, from Lankford, where my neighbors have been, I've lived in the same house for a quarter of a century. Uh, I've got a hockey net at the bottom of the driveway. I've got a bus driver uh, down the road. I've got seniors. Uh, those are the people that I see every day. And they don't think of the world left and right. They think of the needs of their family, the needs of their community. And I, I think that's how you build big tent politics, is responding to the needs of people. And, and that's how I'm constructed. And that's how I'm going to keep going. The challenge now for his NDP majority is making gains and keeping the rest of BC engaged because there were some swing ridings in more rural areas of the province that they had a shot at. It was within reach and they did not flip them to the NDP. He admitted that. He said this majority will let him get out of you know the urban centres more and into BC where forestry is still a huge concern, for example. But in Metro Vancouver, in the urban and suburban areas, the challenge will be delivering on his promises. If he did sway some votes by, for example, transportation transportation issues. He promised to widen Highway 1 through the Fraser Valley, ex extend a, a sky train all the way to Langley, which he needs federal uh, funding from, by the way, to do that. Um, so he's going to have to deliver on those promises. And we have a, a giant uh, tunnel here that needs to be replaced. The NDP, since they've been in government, have kind of booted that down the road. They're now going to have to deliver on those promises because that's what they campaigned on. And those newly NDP voters will be depending on them to do that. And one last point I want to make is the BC Greens. They're no long longer bound by their power sharing agreement, their CASA deal with the Greens. And so that will be a challenge as well. Uh, the Greens will have to try and find some kind of relevancy in the legislature. Uh, you know, Site C, environmental issues, climate change. How is the NDP still going to satisfy those Green voters under their orange wing now because they don't have the BC Greens holding that balance of power in the legislature to do that? David. Okay, Tanya, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. That's the CBC's you Tanya bet. Fletcher in BC. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.